Hi, I'm Bob Murray, and welcome to another edition of Delaware Valley Outdoors. I'm in Deal, Maryland, and we're striper fishing. Stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. I'm in Deer, Maryland, fishing with Captain John Murder. John, huh? we're fishing, we're, we're, we're catching some fish here today. We're out, uh, where are we in the Chesapeake Bay? I, all I see is water around me. We're on Sharps Island Flats, which is on the eastern shore at the mouth of the Chop Tank River. So we're actually over top of a sunken island, as we're you over said? over top of a sunken island here. 50 years ago, people lived on this island. And there's houses and there's the leftovers of houses and schools and roads and everything down here. So we're fishing some structure. Fishing structure. And we have uh, we're chumming. Chumming. And we have what blues and stripers in our. Yeah, that's what's here now: blues and stripers. In our, uh, in our chum slick. In our slick. Okay. The, the blues are on their way out of here, and they're just hanging around in this slick that the fishing boats are making. Okay. Well, let's go and catch some more fish. Let's do it. All right. Let's do it. Okay, what I'm going to do is put a piece of May Hayden on here, get it through, and what we're doing is we're in a chum slick, and we're just drifting these chunks of bait right through the chum slick, and hopefully the stripers and the uh, blues will come up and to hit it. Now I'm going to put it on my light uh, bass tackle here today, see if I can have a little bit more fun. It's not as uh, I might have to tear this up today, but I'm going to try it and see what happens. I have a two split shot up above of it about, uh, about 18, 20 inches, and I'm just going to drop it down and uh, work it back through the chunk slip. Looks like it has more drag. Still there? Go. Let's see how you get the net here. Okay, guys, we got one for the box. Hey, don't keep it. Yep. There we go. Pete's got one. Pete's got one. Well, <laughs> bring it right in here, Pete. Then throw a chum. <laughs> a light. Got it. Got it. Blue. This is fun. Now, this is fun on this rod. <laughs> This is fun on this rod, I like that. <laughs> really nice size snapper. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. John, oh, what we just do, we just caught a little snapper blue here. Now the snapper blues are what, mixed in with the... Uh... Mixed in with the rockfish here. Yeah. This is kind of the end of the season for the blues here. Mm -hmm. And they're moving out and they're in here with the rockfish working on this chum. Working on the chum slick that we have. Now, will we catch any big bluefish or will we catch just... We should the, not catch any big bluefish this time of year. Here. No, just the, the from, call a snapper blue. A snapper blue from probably just legal, which is eight inches to maybe a pound, pound and a half. Bluefish pattern, striper. Oh, nice. Yeah, pretty good. Right there. Okay. Nice to the top, 
Oh, uh, striper. Yeah. A little bigger rock, man. Oh, yeah. I think we got one for the box here. Pete, throw a little ladle of chum in there, will you? Okay. Mm -hmm. Actually, guys, that one's a go short. We're going to put him back. Right. We're going to cut up some bait here. Okay. Uh, what this, kind of fish? This is a menhaden, or in the bay here they call them L wives or bunker offshore. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the dorsal section off about a half inch down, and then we're going to take a slab off of each side. Sort of like filleting, you know? Sort of like filleting, except we're not being nearly as careful. Huh? After we've taken these fillets off, we're going to cut them into pieces about half inch wide and an inch long. We're going to take the dorsal section and cut those like that. If you get too big a bait, he's going to get the bait instead of the hook. So you want to keep your baits, uh, yeah. what about, say an inch? An inch, three quarters of an inch, something like that. So that, a smaller bait's actually more advantageous than a larger hunk. In this case, now if you're on a school with bigger fish, uh -huh. you want to use that dorsal section and just cut it in half so that you have the, just the two pieces mm -hmm. and then these side pieces you want to cut in longer strips for the size fish we're catching today we want to do it just about like this a half inch to three quarters of an inch wide maybe three quarters to an inch long and then just okay. single hook it mm -hmm. single hook it just one hook through you don't have to hide the hook and then Oh, I notice you have a fairly sharp knife there, Captain. Is that that's yes, important? Yes, You must have a sharp knife. Otherwise, you're just going to tear up the baits. These are a real. Now, do you have them fish. kind of frozen, or are they kind of? No, they're fresh. They're just fr really fresh. Frozen will work. Uh huh. When you're thawing the frozen ones, you got to be careful to keep them on ice because they'll go bad as fast as they thaw. You don't uh -huh. keep them ice and down. They would get good. mushy. And... Well, yeah, they and the fish will not bite a bad bait. You know, the, the that's base something that's important to remember. Though. So keep your bait. Your bait has to be also fresh. Your bait has to be fresh. Your chum needs to be okay, wet. Okay, okay. Well, just wait till I, I can catch this fish okay, here. Okay. Well, all we're right. <laughs> we'll interrupt the bait here. Interrupt. Hello. Might have a little strike right here. Okay. Let's get a net. Nice striper. Nice striper. Chuck and bait. About 22 inches. Yep. Nice, nice fish in here. We got another one on here. Uh... <laughs> this is getting crazy here. Showed you how to cut the pieces off for bait. Now we're going to take the carcass and fresh grind it, get some fresh oil right off the fish into the chum slick here. Okay, so you have a, a little bit of a grinder back there. Yeah, this is actually a, a regular sausage or ground beef grinder uh, rigged up for this purpose. We have a 12 volt DC motor. We add a little water for lubrication here. Now we get a nice, fresh, oily bit of chum in there. Okay, now we can run that a few times and continue to put that fresh chum in. There's a nice fish. This one's gonna be a little difficult. Yeah. <laughs> Walking through, walk around. Hey, Pete, uh, somebody's got another fish on here. Yeah, well, I think you lost it. I got him. There we go. That's a nice fish. Yeah. There we go.
We're out on the water here and we have a chum slick working and it's, it's working really great. We are just catching one fish after another and I think that's important to, uh, to realize that when you have a chum slick you're going to get more than one fish on at a time which gets a little crazy. Uh, I'm sure you've seen us running around here. I've been talking, setting the hook, uh, trying to rebait and stuff like that. So when you're out here and you're in a good chum slick, be prepared because things are just going to go crazy. Uh, we haven't had just uh, two or three minutes without a fish hitting one of the lines on the boat. So if you get into a good, good chum slick, look out, it's just going to break loose. I know I'm going to get you another fish. Hi, this is Bob Murray. Delaware Valley Outdoors is now on the internet. Our internet address is www dvoutdoors.com. Visit Delaware Valley Outdoors for the latest in regional fishing reports, weather conditions, maps, pros tips, and product updates. Why not visit us on the web? Quality striper fishing on the Chesapeake with Captain John Murder. You can't beat it. It is wonderful. Come on down, see Captain John, and I know you're going to catch some great, great fish. Look at these things. They're beautiful. John, you got a, a nifty little tool here. Uh, did you make this or? Yes, I did make this. You oh. can buy them commercially. Uh -huh. But you made it uh, yourself. Yeah, it's just a piece of stainless steel rod uh -huh. with a piece of PVC for a handle. And what do you, what do, you do it? Well, we use this for flipping the fish off, especially when you got a lot of fish uh, on at one time. Uh -huh. Coming in the boat, you need to get them off quick without uh -huh. fooling with them. You just hook this around the hook, pull the line towards the fish and give it a flip and he comes right off right in the box. Oh, that's good. So that's a, it's a quicker method to get them in the fish. Because I know we're, yeah. we're bouncing around here like crazy guys right yeah. now. And that's a good way. Well, great. Thanks. Yeah, Pete's got one on here now. We'll show you how it works. <laughs> All right. Bring him right here, Pete. OK, you just take and put it right around the line like that. Pull it down to the fish. Hold the line this way. Give him a toss. And then he goes. And then he goes. That's easier than trying to grab them. And Especially with like blue fish, fish. or other fish with, uh -huh. with large teeth. teeth. Yeah. <laughs> Saves on the. Uh, yeah. It gives you your fingers. <laughs> Could I have another bait there, sir? Yeah, we'll fix you right up. Okay. One of the things I want to uh, emphasize here that this is a great family sport. Uh, as you can see behind us, we have some small boats that are just private uh, guys that have their own boats. You see a father and a son over there. You see a lot of small boats. So it's something that you and uh, your family, your wife, your, your son, your daughter can come on down, uh, charter up uh, Captain John here, and come out for a, a great fun-filled day. I mean, this is action-packed, and it's, it's a lot of fun, let me tell you. We're just catching one fish after another, and I'm sure you have a couple of kids on board, your wife. It'll be a great idea. You'll, you'll have great memories, and it'll just be a lot of fun for you to spend a beautiful October day down on the Chesapeake with Captain John Murder. I'm going to catch me another fish. Fish. Nice chum fish. Uh, it might, might not keep. Hmm? Might not keep. <laughs> oh, yeah, it'll keep. Huh? It'll keep. There's some chum there, Pete. Okay. Yeah, it's 19 and a half. Nice fish. Settle down.
down on Chesapeake Bay with Captain John Murdered. Captain John, nice fishing with you again. Enjoy having you. Fish on. <laughs> I got another fish here. I got one in my hands. And uh, what was that? I don't think I lost this one. Oh, I still got it. We're striper fishing. It's, it's crazy. John, put that one in a box. We'll be right back as soon as I get this fish in. Yeah, it's on. <laughs> Boom, 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 boom. Ain't nothing cooler than the blues. Shoot you right down. It's living the blues. Complete. Definitive. It's the kind of collection only Time Life could put together. It could be a spoonful of coffee. Could be a spoonful of tea. Start with blues legends and get 20 absolutely essential blues classics for just $9.99 on cassette or compact disc. Someone gonna hurt you like you hurt me. Then audition other albums. Keep only the ones you want. Satisfaction guaranteed. The blues are hotter than ever. So call now. To order Living the Blues, call 1 800 963 4466. Or send 999 for one cassette or one CD plus 350 shipping to Living the Blues, Department 1, Richmond, Virginia. Searching for personalized service and one-stop shopping for all your hunting and fishing needs? Then come to Tanner's Gun and Sports Center. Tanner's offers a wide variety of hunting and fishing gear, featuring guns, rifles, a complete line of rods and reels, live bait, tackle, archery supplies, and hunting and fishing apparel. Tanner's is also your stop for guns bought, sold, and traded. In addition, be sure to check out Tanner's innovative indoor archery range with on-screen video scoring to help you improve your bow and arrow hunting. Tanner's Gun and Sports Center in Jamison, 343-3103. This is Bob Murray. Delaware Valley Outdoors is now on the internet. Our internet address is www.dvoutdoors.com. Visit Delaware Valley Outdoors for the latest in regional fishing reports, weather conditions, maps, pros tips, and product updates. Why not visit us on the web? So you're building that deck with Time Life to help you along. You might want to add some built-in benches, page 50. How about a brick patio, guaranteed weed proof, and a lot easier on your checkbook than some contractor would be. Now with home repair, you get two books for two bucks. Order decks, porches, and patios for just a buck 99 and get kitchens free. Those new countertops sure look good and doing it yourself probably saved a bundle. So you could do that built-in recycling bin she wanted. Step by step, Time Life makes it easy. With home repair, you get professional results at do-it-yourself prices. Use your credit card to order decks for just a buck ninety-nine and get kitchens free. Home repair makes you a real hero around the house. So why don't you give them a call? They'd probably love to hear from you. Call 1-800-958-7788. Use your credit card to order decks, porches, and patios, and you'll get kitchens free. Or send check or money order for $1.99 plus $3.95 shipping to the address on your screen. There's a nice fish. Oh, yeah, better yeah. fish. They're better fish, yeah. They don't have to get too much of a hurry, I don't think. Yeah, you know. This guy's got some, he's got some shoulders on him, John. Oh, nice fish. Hang on, dude. Hang on, dude. Nice fish. Nice fish. Get him out of there. Oh, yeah. There we go. Nice. Nice striper. Nice striper. Chuck and bait. About 22 inches. Yep. Nice, nice fish in here. Is it blue? Good. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. This is going to This one. Okay. John, I know we have another, what we call a... What, do you, what kind of blue we want to call this? A These are snapper, snapper blue. And we're just talking about cooking fish. Now, how would we, uh, theoretically, let me set this rod down so I can do this. How would we cook this fish now? Well, we'll fillet them out, and then you can either fry the fillets. Some people like to bread them, a little butter or onion along with it in the pan. 
Uh, they bake real good. These are not as strong as the bigger blue fish. Yeah, a lot of people don't like the uh, yeah, stronger the, taste yeah. of the big blue. Well, these are stronger than, than your striper or orange roughy or uh -huh. something like that. Uh -huh. But they're um, they're not nearly as strong as the bigger fish. If you like eating fish uh, with a, just a little fishier taste, these are really great. Either fried or baked with whatever your favorite seasoning is. A little onion, maybe a little garlic, a little butter. Okay, well let's put this one, one in the one one box. I'm gonna, we're going to take some of these home and uh, I'm going to have a little little fish fry when I get home. Okay, we're at the tackle box section of the show. Captain John, what did we use today? I mean, it was pretty simple fishing today in the sense of our tackle wasn't that complicated. Now, chumming's not all that complicated. There's a few things you got to remember. Today we were using a size one mustad type hook. When the smaller fish are schooled up, you don't want to use too big a hook. We weren't trying to hide it just one time through. We're using 20 pound test line on a medium duty spinning reel with a medium duty rod. So the line test was about 20 pound. About 20 pound test. Mm -hmm. We're, today, what was working was two split shot. They're about eight ounce split shot. Some days you need a little less, some days you need a little more depending on how deep the fish are in the water. And as we started out this morning, we had some without, some with one, some with two. So we found out what was going to work. And we didn't have much wave action and not much and, wave and action current, and so not much current. So we can so let it fall down fall through down. the, the Sometimes you need a smaller hook without a leader. If the fish are really spooky and they're not going to bite, you get a little darker hook, a little smaller hook with no leader, just put it right on the line. Tied directly to Tied the line. Tied directly to the line. Mm -hmm. Do you ever use uh, like the swivels or anything like well, that? Well, we mostly use that for our trolling. Mm -hmm. uh, we use these when we're drum fishing for deeper and so that the fish can't feel the weight. We use a heavy sinker, run that through there, and then the fish can't feel the weight when he bites the bait. The larger hooks, we use them for stingers when we're trolling and for drum fishing. Okay, but basically we were just using that. Today we were using the smaller hooks. The fish are anywhere between um, eight, 10 inch fish and 25 inch fish. You don't want too big a hook for them to get in their mouth or for them to see. Okay, that's great. Back at the dock, and Captain John is going to show us how to uh, fillet a striped bass. Okay, Bob. First thing I'm going to do is kind of cut the fillet away from the head, around the fin here, free that up. Then we're going to go along the backbone on this side. It's going to go right along the center line of the backbone here. Again, John, I know we talked a little bit late, earlier about that. You have to have a very sharp knife. Very sharp knife. Now you can reach in here and follow, just follow the edge of the backbone. Kind of hold the fillet back. And you can see in here the backbone, just run right along that. Right, let's, let's see if we can show Mike. Okay, so right, right along, along the edge there. of the backbone. Then when you get over the backbone, you want to tilt your knife that way and go along those bottom bones. Cut all the way through on the back side. Run this along the rib cage. Just take that right off. Now you do the same thing on the other side. And you'll get two nice... Flip him over here and we'll skin him out in a minute. And two nice fillets we'll get out of there. Cut the fillet away from the, the head. Okay, you can go right in here, right along the bone. Take that piece of the dorsal fin off. See how the blade's just following right along mm -hmm. the bone? Just right along the backbone. Over and 
draw that bone right on, right on down. When you get on the other side, turn your knife to the other edge. Now, when you're all done with that, of course, you don't want to take the scales home with you. So you get a hold of the back of the fillet like this. And what you have is nothing but fish. Look at that. And then you'll make another fillet out of this. And uh, a lot of people. Uh, uh, aren't used to eating a lot of striped bass, but it's a very, very tasty, very, mild, yeah, very, very, very tasty very fish. fish. All right, there we go. Excellent fish. Two excellent fillets, and I know, John, uh, I'm probably going to have some tonight when I get home. Terrific. Right. We'll make the rest of them into dinner for you. All right, thank you. Put your rod tip down. Come back, come back here. Yeah. Okay. Pick, pick him up easy. Pick him up easy. Bring him back. Oh. Ah, okay. All right. Lady. Right. Beautiful. That's the keeper. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Pat. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's get this up here. Chesapeake Bay stripers. Captain John Murder. Fall fishing. Pat, where are you? Get over here. Beautiful fishing. We'll see you again on Delaware Valley Outdoors. And don't forget to visit our website and find out what's happening on Chesapeake. See our website dvoutdoors.com. We'll see you again on Delaware Valley Outdoors. Good going, boy. Good.